Where will the next amazing ancient artifact discovery happen? In your country? In your town or city? How about at the end of your street? Or even in your garden if you're fortunate enough to have one? They can happen anywhere at any time. And this video is the proof. There's a 15th century mirror in the collection of the Cincinnati Art Museum in the United States of America. It's been with the museum for years, but until recently, it hadn't been on display since 2017. That changed in July 2022, when Hu Mei Sung, the museum's curator of East Asian art, realized there was something special about it. This is actually a so-called magic mirror. When exposed to light in the right circumstances, its reflection reveals a hidden image. To be more specific, it's an image of a seated Buddha. The image is only visible when the mirror is exposed to very powerful focus light, suggesting that it was either deliberately made difficult to see or that the glass has become less reflective over time. Now we know that the mirror contains the image of a Buddha, we can finally make sense of the inscription on its back. The inscription says Amitabha. He's known to have been an important figure in many schools of East Asian Buddhism during ancient times. It's thought that this form of art was developed during China's Han Dynasty era 2,000 years ago, and later spread to Japan. A 2,000-year-old hologram enclosed in a gold jewel has been discovered in the so-called Flavio Targanic tomb, also known as the Hypogeum of Garlands, at the Grotta Ferrata necropolis near Rome. The ring of Titus Carvilius Gemelo was found on the finger of a Roman matron, the noble Abutia Quarta. The underground chapel contained two marble sarcophagi with relief decorations inscribed with the names of the two deceased, Carvilio Gemelo and Abutia Quarta. The bodies were still intact due to embalming, with Carvilio's remains known as the Mummy of Rome. Carvilio's body was wrapped in a shroud and covered with flowers, Large garlands covered the upper half of the body. Ibudia's body was covered with a vegetal mantle made up of hundreds of small garlands. On the head was placed a well-preserved wig, wrapped in a net woven with double fine gold thread, ending in a braid. On her finger was the gold ring, with a kabakan worked rock crystal bezel, through which the bust of a male figure finely executed on a micro-relief sheet is visible. The luminous effect of the crystal lens gives a mysterious depth to the image of the deceased. The ring is on display at the Museo Archeologica Nazionale di Palestrina. Picture this, a sword of exquisite craftsmanship, silver-plated with a silver and crystal handle and cross hilt, designed to hold a relic, rumored to be a piece of bone from St. Peter. This unique sword was a gift to King Henry VIII of England from Pope Leo X in 1521. The gift was in recognition of King Henry's military incursions into France to stop Catholic heresy and his self-written document titled In Defense of the Seven Sacraments. This also earned him the title of Defender of the Faith from the Catholic Church. Though the sword served no official function given Henry's penchant for weapons, he no doubt prized it, even after his split from Catholicism. Today, this piece of history is kept at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, England. Can you imagine the stories this sword could tell if it could speak? The political intrigues, the battles it may or may not have been used in, and the dramatic shift in religious affiliations of its owner. It's a tangible connection to a turbulent time in history, and it's right there for anyone to see in Oxford. A thrilling underwater adventure recently unfolded off the coast of Takashima Island in Matsura, Nagasaki Prefecture, Japan. Researchers and the Matsura city government have managed to recover an anchor from a ship that was part of the late 13th century Mongolian armada that attempted to invade Japan. This wooden anchor, with a stick-like stone as a weight, was found in 2013 and is about 5.6 feet long. It was finally pulled up from 60 feet below the sea surface on October 1, 2022. The Mongol Empire's invasion attempts in 1274 and 1281, both during the Kamakura period, were thwarted 
by unexpected fierce winds that damaged many of the ships. The anchor's recovery could lead to further research on the mysterious invasion attempts, shedding light on details of the large-scale armada, such as the nature of the military force and the types of ships. The city also plans to study the sunken ship and determine how to best use it by establishing an underwater archaeology research center. This is a time capsule from a tumultuous period of Japanese history and may yet have more secrets to reveal. The Seal of Wolfric isn't as beautiful as, for example, the Talisman of Charlemagne, but it's no less significant or mysterious. The tale of its discovery is strange. It was found inside a box in a garden shed in Sittenbourne, Kent, England, during a house clearance in 1976. Despite being found in such an unlikely place, it's a rare and genuine Anglo-Saxon seal matrix that predates the Norman Conquest of 1066. Only five seal matrixes from this era have ever been found, and this is one of only three that's made from walrus ivory. Archaeologists think it was made somewhere between 1040 and 1050. The Anglo-Saxon inscription around its edges clearly identifies it as the seal of Wolfric, but Wolfric's identity remains unknown. He might have been the bearded man whose portrait is carved into the center of the artifact. The figure is shown with a sword, which means he was probably a secular figure, and might have been a senior minister to the King of England. He was not, however, a king, and his name doesn't turn up in any historical records from the time. Still, someone thought enough of him to wear his seal as a pendant around their neck. Perhaps it was Wolfric himself. Prepare to be dazzled by a luxurious tapestry version of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper, now on display at the Regia di Venaria in Turin, Italy. This stunning piece, measuring 30 feet long and 16 feet high, was commissioned by Louise of Savoy and her son, the future King Francis I of France, around 1514. Woven exclusively of silk, gold, and silver threads, it's a near-exact copy of Leonardo's masterpiece, even capturing his signature fumatura technique. But here's the twist. Instead of the dull background of the original, the setting is a bright courtyard draped with two millefleur tapestries and adorned with a triple-arched bridge and multicolored marbles. Francis presented this tapestry to Pope Clement VII in 1533 as a lavish gift celebrating a politically important marriage. It was highly regarded and used on special occasions like the Corpus Christi Procession and Holy Week. Restored by the Vatican's unique textile conservation team, it has only left the Vatican twice since its initial presentation. You can see grandeur and history woven into this tapestry just by looking at it. It's not just a piece of art. It's a symbol of alliances, rituals, and the spread of religious ceremony across Europe. Next, we head to the German village of Beitz, close to Brandenburg in the northeast of the country. That's where a collection of 41 golden cup-shaped coins were discovered in January 2020. They're the only Celtic coins ever to be found in the region, and despite being very visibly gold, they're known as rainbow cups. Archaeologists associate them with the former Celtic Latin culture of Central Europe. The rainbow name comes from a folk story about the coins always being found by farmers when plowing their fields after heavy rain, which led to a myth that they were left behind after rainbows. Unusually for coins of this type, the ones found in bites are undecorated and have smooth surfaces. To make them even more mysterious, there's never been a Celtic population in Brandenburg. The coins must have found their way here through a trade network that existed during the Iron Age. Having been taken from the site and cleaned up, the coins will now be carefully studied before being placed on display inside the Brandenburg State Archaeological Museum later in 2023. Gather round for the tale of the Lackock Cup, a late medieval silver standing cup that has survived the test of time. Created in the mid-15th century, this 13-inch high cup is described as one of the most significant pieces of secular English medieval silver. 
Unlike most feasting cups of its time, which were destroyed or altered, the Lackock Cup was donated to St. Syriac's Church in Lackock, Wiltshire, England soon after its creation, allowing it to survive in its original condition. Its function changed after the English Reformation, and since 1962, it has been on display at the British Museum. In 2009, the church valued the cup at 1.8 million pounds and applied to sell it. Despite legal challenges, the sale was completed in 2013 for 1.3 million pounds in a joint bid from the British Museum and the Wiltshire Museum Devises. As part of the sale agreement, two replicas were made, one for liturgical use at the church and one for display at the Wiltshire Museum. This is a piece of history that continues to enchant and inspire a true treasure of medieval England. Let's delve into the amazing story of the reliquary pendant for the Holy Thorn. This exquisite piece, dating to around 1340, is believed to contain a thorn from the crown of thorns allegedly worn by Christ during the crucifixion. The thorn might have been part of the collection bought by King Louis IX of France from Baldwin II, the Latin Emperor of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The pendant's outer cover is adorned with amethyst, and the interior is enameled with scenes from Christ's life. A secular scene possibly depicts the French king, Philip VI and his wife, Jean de Bourgogne. The central leaf conceals the relic of the holy thorn, crowned with a small gold piece. Measuring about 1.5 by 1 by 1 inches, this pendant is not just a work of art, but a symbol of faith and devotion. It's a window into the religious fervor and artistic mastery of medieval Europe, reflecting a time when relics were revered and cherished. Isn't it fascinating how a tiny, delicate object can hold such profound historical and spiritual significance? Writing generic phrases on household items in the hope that they'll somehow make either the item or the house they're in more interesting is an irritation of the modern age. But it's not a modern habit. If the oft-repeated phrase live, laugh, love annoys you, spare a thought for whoever thought making this vase was a good idea during the 4th century. It was discovered by archaeologists in an ancient necropolis in Autun, France, in November 2020. The message inscribed upon its surface translates into English as either live in felicity or live happily. It's a shame the message is so basic because the vase itself is rare and beautiful. It's a diatretic vase, and it's the only full intact vase of its kind ever to be found in France, which was once the Roman territory of Gaul. Even if you count those that have been discovered in pieces, only 10 diatretic vases have ever been found. This one is the first since the 1970s. The ancient Romans were light years ahead of everybody else in the world when it came to glassmaking, and artifacts like this serve as proof of that fact. In the Capitoline Museum of Rome, Italy, you'll find a bronze colossus statue of Emperor Constantine. It's not quite complete, but as of April 2021, it's more complete than it has been for a very long time. Until then, the emperor was missing his bronze finger. Somehow, the finger had ended up separated from the statue and found in the Louvre in France, where it had been misfiled and left in storage. The 15-inch long digit was cut off the statue in the 4th century for reasons unknown. But then that's hardly surprising because almost everything about this statue is unknown. It was probably built during the 1st century, but wasn't a statue of Constantine back then. The face was carved and cut again and again to reflect the features of the current emperor, finally settling on Constantine in the 4th century. What happened to it after Constantine's reign came to an end in the year 337 is unclear, but the Colossus wasn't seen again until the 12th century. By that point, there was nothing left of it apart from the head, forearm, and hand. Various bits of it have reappeared in the years since then, with the finger being the latest addition. If all the remaining parts are eventually found, the Emperor might once again reach his intended height of 40 feet. For most of 2021, archaeologists in Tamil Nadu, India, 
dug their way through former Kiladi territory in the hope of finding out more about this ancient and mysterious civilization. In August of that year, they scored their biggest find to date. It's a rusty dagger, and it's something like 2,300 years old. The experts found it in the midst of what appears to be a Kiladi cemetery. There are dozens of urn burials in the area, but curiously, this appears to be the only case of someone being buried alongside their weapon. Amazingly, the dagger still has a few scraps of its original wooden handle attached. It's the presence of the wood that's allowed archaeologists to carbon date the artifact. The design of the weapon is more akin to a dagger that would be used in close combat than a dagger that might be thrown during a hunt, and it's also a design that archaeologists have seen before. The daggers that were carried by warriors during the Sangam period looked a lot like this. Historians have always thought that the Sangam period was over by the time the Kiladi first appeared, but now they've begun to wonder whether there was an overlap or whether the Kiladi and the Sangam were one and the same. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.